Okay, so now um, what we're going to do is look what happens when we move beyond the third period. And this is interesting because we now start filling up D and F subshells and things get a little bit weird. So beyond the third period, um, orbitals don't fill in an obvious way. And it's for that reason that I mentioned before, because of the bunching up of our energy levels, our shell levels, with when we um, put in the splitting into the subshells, things start getting muddled up. And the probably the, the real obvious one that we first see is that the 4S ends up coming below the 3D, which is completely sort of non-intuitive. So fortunately, there's a, a way of keeping track of all of the weirdness that happens along the way. And it's called the uh, it's through the use of what we call the Aufbau diagram. So what you do is you write 1s through um, 7s in the first column, and then at row two, you write 2p down to 7p, and then in row um, three, you write 3d down to 7d. There's no reason to cut it off. We can keep going. And then in row four, you write 4f down to 7f, and that gives you the kind of the general layout and then you put these diagonal arrows in and what happens is you start placing electrons into these subshells when you get to the end of an arrow you go and start the next one and that gives you or takes into account all the weirdness that you're going to see along the way and so you can see here that this diagram prompts us that we would fill the 4s and then we fill the 3d and then down here, we fill the 5S, and then we fill the 4D. So it takes into account any weirdness that happens along the way, but it starts doing something similar when we get down to the, um, the F. So here, we fill the 6S, then we do the 4F, then we do the 5F, and then we do the 6P. So all of those kind of non-intuitive um, things get taken care of through the use of this diagram. So you should kind of have a copy of this diagram handy when you're working on electron configuration problems. You should also know how to use it. It's pretty simple. You just follow the sequence and keep in mind that in an S subshell, you put two electrons. In a P subshell, you put six electrons. In a D subshell, you put 10. And in an F, you put 14. So what happens? Let's have a look at um, what happens is we're part putting some electrons into these D subshells. So in period four, we're going to finish off the um, the 4S um, orbitals or orbital, and then we start filling up the 3D orbitals. So potassium is the first member of the um, fourth period. It has electron configuration just written in the condensed form here, argon 4s1. Next to um, potassium is calcium, it's argon 4s2. And then now we begin filling up the 3D. Now the 3D can take 10 electrons, so we're gonna kind of do this um, in a fairly prompt manner. And so here we go, scandium is 3D1, Titanium is 3D2, vanadium is 3D3, chromium is 3D4. Whoa, hang on a minute. Chromium is not 3D4. We're going to have to come back to that in a moment. Okay, so chromium should have been 3D4, which means manganese would be 3D5. Iron is 3D6. Cobalt is 3D7. Nickel is 3D8. Copper is 3D... 9, it's not 3D9 at all, it's 3D10. So copper's a weirdo one as well. So this should have been D9, which means that will be D10. So what we see is there are two exceptions for chromium and for copper. And you do need to memorize these. And what's happened here, instead of it being 4S2, 3D4, what we see has happened is an electron has been borrowed from the 4S subshell and put into the 3D to give us the configuration 4S1, 3D5. And the same has happened for copper. Instead of it being 4S2, 3D9, which is what we might expect, an electron has been stolen from the 4S subshell and now has been moved over into the 3D subshell. So 
there are these two exceptions in period four and we do need to know them. So what we see is chromium has the electron configuration 4s13d5 and it's also worth noting that molybdenum that is immediately underneath chromium also has a similar ns1 and minus 1d5 configuration except for this would be incremented by one so this is 4s1 4d5 for uh, molybdenum and then copper has the, has the configuration argon 4s1 3d10 instead of 4s2 3d9 and then the elements that are underneath copper also follow um, that pattern where they are ns1 parentheses n minus 1 d10 rather than the expected um, s2 d9 so we do have to keep in mind these um, exceptions for the copper group it's the whole column for the chromium group it's just molybdenum underneath it that does this kind of weird thing and so why does it happen well this happens because a half filled d um, subshell or a completely filled d subshell is very stable so what's happening in chromium is by half filling the 4s that allows the 3d to be completely half filled with five electrons and that's a very very stable arrangement in terms of energy in copper we have a similar scenario um, happening we get um, by half filling the 4s we get an extra electron and then that allows us to finish off the d subshell for period four or once we've finished off the 3d according to the alphabet diagram we then go back and start populating the 4p subshell and that's exactly what happens so you know apart from the um, exceptions for the uh, copper group and those elements in the chromium group chromium and molybdenum you know it's a fairly obvious pattern across the um, d subshell once we get down to period six and seven we start filling up f subshells for the first time so that's kind of um interesting and so the elements that are going to have f electrons are these guys that are in the two rows that sit at the bottom of the periodic table so remember that they're really meant to be up there but we just put them underneath for the sake of having a periodic table that fits nicely on the page so period seven follows the same sort of general filling sequence as period six um, but you know it's sort of um, what you see down here is that period seven we don't have to go out all the way out here because we actually run out of elements so how does the order go well you see on the periodic table that we have two columns over here and we have six columns over here and then we have 10 columns in the middle and then at the bottom we have 14 columns and so what's occurring is as we move across this region of the periodic table we call it the s block or the s region we're populating S subshells. As we move across here, we're populating up P subshells through the middle. We're filling up D subshells. And then these two rows at the bottom that are 14 across, we're filling up the F subshells. So you can actually count off an electron configuration from the periodic table. We go 1S1, 1S2, 2S1, 2S2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 3p2, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6, 3p7, uh, 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6, 4s1, 4s2, 3d1, all the way through to 3d10, 4p1, all the way through to 4p6. 5s1, 5s2, 4d1, and then we can come down here. Sorry, sorry, 4d1, all the way through to 4d10, 
5p1, 5p6, 6s1, 6s2, 5d1, and then we come down here, 4f, 4f1, all the way through to 4f14, and then back up and finishing off the 5d, 5d10, finishing here, 6p1, and so forth. So you can kind of actually use the um, periodic table to, um, you know, allow you to write out an electron configuration. You've just got to kind of count it off, if you will, and follow where you are with respect to what we call the S, P, D, and F regions of the periodic table. So this is another diagram that's worth kind of keeping handy when you're trying to write out an electron configuration. Okay, so what we talked about here is that in period four, we see um, D electrons for the first time. There are a couple of issues with elements that are in the groups where we have chromium and copper at the top of those groups. And we have to keep in mind that elements in those groups do not strictly follow the sequence indicated by the alpha diagram. Once we get down to period six and seven, electrons, yeah, that's meant to be electrons, begin to fill F subshells for the first time. And so we have up to 14 electrons that can go in one of those subshells. And then the final point to make is if you want an alternative to the alpha diagram, you can, if you keep track of everything, just count your electron configuration off the periodic table. Okay.